he doesn't just talk the talk, he's walking the walk, he's out there, he's advocating, he's involved in the community, he cares deeply about social justice issues. And for you now to sit here convicted of hoaxing hate crimes, racial hate crimes, and homophobic hate crimes, the hypocrisy is just astounding. The lights are on you. You are actually throwing a national pity party for yourself. And why would you do such a thing? Why would you, I, I understand, you crave the attention so much, but why would you betray something like social justice issues, which you care so much about? And the only thing I could conclude is that, is, and I acknowledge, there are wonderful sides to you. They're, they're very giving and charitable and loving sides to you, but you have another side of you that is profoundly arrogant and self, selfish and narcissistic. You premeditated this case uh, to an extreme that, that is, that's amazing. You wrote a script. The script involved words. You're going to encounter me on the street, yell out empire, n-word, f-word. You're going to hit me. You're going to beat me up. You're going to put bleach on me. You're going to put a noose around my neck. That's a script that you wrote. Now, it's not a good script, especially for uh, Streeterville in Chicago. It's questionable, but it's a script that you wrote. You picked out the actors. You chose the Oshindero brothers. And why did you do that? Because you knew them. You trusted them. They idolized you. You're an established actor in a serious television uh, production of Empire. They were kind of hangers on there. They're trying to get jobs as extras, maybe a little speaking part here and there. But they, you were mentoring them. You were helping them. They wanted your advice. They would do anything for you. They thought you were, you, you were one of the greatest people in the world to know and that you could help them in their careers. They're in great shape. They gave you a little advice about uh, diet and exercise, but they idolized you, and they would have done anything for you, and you chose them because you knew that you could trust them, that they were loyal to you. You paid them advance by check. Not necessarily a good idea, uh, but it was your idea. It was part of the plan that you would pay them in advance, uh, and, and the check was out there. The check was shown into evidence. That was part of your premeditation. You chose a date, you chose a time, you chose a location, you had props procured. You gave them a hundred dollar bill and had them get the, the supplies. What are the supplies in this case? Get masks. Nobody should see you. We're going we're to say that you're white, uh, but you, obviously the Ocean Darrow brothers are, are not white. We're going to cover your faces in masks. We're going to have a red hat because that's going to indicate MAGA country. We're going to get a rope that we're going to use as a noose going to procure some bleach, you're going to have the supplies. And then you had all that together and then you did rehearsals. You picked them up and you did drive-bys. You drove around and around the block, you picked them up in Lakeview in their neighborhood and some distance away you went to Streeterville where you were living and you showed them. You're going here, you're going there and you're going over the lines. You're going over the script with them so they would memorize the script. You're indicating which brother, you're, you're the one that's going to hit me, uh, you're the one that's going to put the noose around my neck and pour the bleach on me. This was planned. This was premeditated, premeditated the extreme, and I find that your extreme premeditation in this case is an aggravating factor today. You go into your apartment, the police are called, the police arrive. The first officer on the scene is Chicago Police Officer Muhammad Baig, in full uniform, the first responder of the first responders. His body cam is on. He sees you. And now he sees that that noose is around your neck, but it's not the way that, that you walked into the house. Now the noose is up at your throat. You've maneuvered it, the noose, and you've made it look worse than it was. This is part of your plan. Officer Bay gets a simple question, what happened? And then you start to lie. And you haven't stopped lying ever since. You've been lying and lying and lying about this case, and that's why you're here today. You want to fake the incident on the street, try to get some attention at work, try to have somebody else feel sorry for you, that would never have got you here. The problem was you lied to the police and you caused all kinds of consternation. You caused a major investigation to take place which got many people involved and caused great stress throughout the city uh, and throughout the entire community here and that's the problem. That's why you're here now. You've become toxic in your own workplace. Your career uh, future is uncertain at very best. It was really on a rocket ship uh, to success, and now you've, you've turned yourself into riches to rags, and it's so unfortunate. Your very name has become an adverb for lying, and I cannot imagine what could be worse than that. 
people talk about uh, situations where somebody's uh, lying and trying to manipulate and, and maneuver a story and, and your name comes up is, oh, pulling a justice, something like that. You got on the witness stand, you didn't have to, you did, you certainly have a right to, but you committed hour upon hour upon hour of pure perjury. And I find all those to be ample factors. There is a lot of mitigation in this case as well. And I'm mindful of the pleas of mercy, particularly from people that are in the arena of dealing with social justice issues, that are fighting, seriously fighting, not playing around, not doing games like you are doing, but seriously fighting for uh, matters involving hate crimes of, of all sorts. And they're asking you for mercy as well. I'm fashioning the following sentence, and here's your sentence. I'm sentencing you to 30 months felony probation, and the probation is going to be to this court. You're going to be allowed to travel wherever you want. You do not have to live in the state of Illinois. You can report by phone. I know that uh, if you're going to try to make a living and do some of the things you do, you may have to go to uh, other, uh, other places, New York and Los Angeles. You can do those things. You will pay restitution to the city of Chicago in the amount of $120,106. You are fined $25,000, which is the maximum fine, and you will spend the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail. And that will start today, right here, right now. Mr. Smollett, though the jury found you guilty and I've sentenced you as I have, you have the right to appeal the findings and rulings of the court or ask your sentence be modified. To do those things, you need to file a notice of appeal in writing within 30 days. You may also file a motion to modify your sentence, which would have to be filed in writing within 30 days. Anything not stated in those filings are waived for purposes of appeal. You cannot afford lawyers or transcripts. They would be provided free of charge. Do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I was about to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Right. Yeah. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. 